everybody, we are back. It's Wednesday, and that means it's new comic book day, and we have a ton of comics to review tonight, uh, starting with, first of all, Wolf Number One from Image Comics. Now, if you haven't read Wolf Number One and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to skip this part of the video and maybe move on, or maybe come back to this video later, because we're going to talk about it, and it's going to get pretty spoilery. First of all, I, I, I enjoyed the comic. Yeah, I, I loved, it was really good. I loved the art. It was super long, though. But for a $5 comic, it's really not bad. You get yeah. a lot for your money. Yeah, it was really long. But like you said, if you have a $5 comic, you want it to be long. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> what's the point? The, the, my only knock on it, on it is it's kind of confusing. Yeah, for being a number one, it was really confusing. But... It's confusing in a way that you are you know you'll get it eventually. Yeah. Like, you know that as you read it, it'll start to make more sense. Yeah. It's not confusing in the, oh my gosh, so much stuff is happening, I can't keep it all straight. Yeah. It's basically world building, and it's it's the, the world that, that they've created in this book is just, it's going to take a little while to really understand it. Because yeah. we get right off, we get that there's, in, on, the, in the, on the planet, or on Earth, there are 10 million humans... And the rest are supernatural beings. And that means the ratio is completely out of whack compared to most books of this kind. Mm -hmm. And the, the main character is a character named Wolf. Mm -hmm. And he is a supernatural detective. And he has these things that follow him around called myths. And it's like they're spirits or um, something of that nature. And they give him, you know, insight into things that are going on around him. And I think somewhere at the end, somebody mentioned that um, it's hard to find a clairvoyant. So I don't know if that's what his title is. Um, they also call him an immortal a couple of times. Yeah. Um, although he denies it, sort yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> he like half ass denies it. So I don't know if his specific supernatural has a title or if it's... People think it, it's like kind of like people know of him, like he's yeah. got a reputation. So I wonder, is he really any of these specific supernaturals, or does he have this rep that precedes him, and it's different yeah. depending on who told the story? I get the impression that he is a supernatural that has multiple abilities. Yeah, I get that impression as well. So, and I, and I think he's probably like top tier supernatural badass. <laughs> it seems I don't want to get too too spoilery, although I will say. The comic does seem to be going in the direction where he's going to have to be taking care of someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, her name is Anita Christ, which <laughs> I love because it, it kind of, when you're reading it, kind of looks like Antichrist as you're reading it, but her name's Anita. So I, I just thought that was really witty and clever, and I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it as well. Okay, what's next? Oh! Archie versus Sharknado. This is a one-off, and it is absolutely awesome and hilarious yes. and amazing in every way. Yeah, like I am not an Archie fan. I, I, I I'm neither here nor there on the Archie comics. Um, however, they did Archie vs. Predator recently, and it was really funny and just out there and fantastic. And so when they did Archie vs. Sharknado, well, yeah, of course, we're going to have to uh, read this. Yeah. Uh, and it's absolutely yeah. amazing. Most of the it's book, hilarious. most of it actually centers around Betty and Veronica, which yeah. I thought was really refreshing because in an Archie book, you generally don't get that. You have to read Betty or Veronica to get, you know, a big Betty or Veronica story. But this, it follows Betty and Veronica, <laughs> Veronica, it follows <laughs> Betty and Veronica in DC first with Veronica's dad. And right off, he gets fucking eaten by a shark. Yeah. <laughs> what I really like is it follows Betty and Veronica and they are total badasses. Like yeah. they totally saved the day. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, everybody else would have died. Yeah. <clears throat> now, how did you feel? Of course, you know, just <clears throat> spoilers obviously clearly I've already given away a big one. So if you want to avoid spoilers, <laughs> uh, sorry. But uh, what did you think about uh, Archie actually ending up with Cheryl? I, well, I don't know the Archie storyline, but basically to me, Archie just seems like he's dating all the girls and all the girls yeah. like him. So I that right off the bat makes me not like him. So yeah. And I think Betty and Veronica are probably better off. <laughs> 
Anyway, check out Archie vs. Shark or Sharknado, for real. It's absolutely yeah. hilarious. There's lots of call-outs to other um, genres. There's a, there's yeah, a, there's a Star, there's a Star Trek, Trek, Trek reference in there. There's a, oh, there's so much going on in this guy. It's absolutely amazing, and Jughead does some amazing stuff. It's <laughs> like really cool. Okay. Star Lord and Kitty Pride number one, and I really enjoyed this one too. I really this enjoyed really... this as well, um, especially Kitty Pride's gown in like the entire thing. I'm like, hmm, I don't do many pretty cosplays. I might need to add that. <laughs> <laughs> so again, spoiler alert: we're going to be talking about this one. It's going to be pretty spoilery. It takes place on Battle World, obviously, because mm -hmm. Secret War is still going on. But it takes place like solely, basically, in Manhattan. And Star Lord is working as a lounge singer. Yes. And but he but he's uh, going under the, the moniker of Stevie Rogers, and he's like, "Sorry, Captain." Yes. Um. And it appears that he arrived at Battle World after it became Battle World, yeah. so he has memories of before, yeah. which makes him like enemy number one when it comes to Doom. Yeah. So they're looking for him, which is why he goes by Stevie Rogers. Yeah. And my favorite thing about this comic, though, is he's he's working as a lounge singer, but he's just using like Disney theme songs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he's singing Disney songs. Like like he, you know, um, <laughs> part of your like he starts off he's singing part of your world from, from Little Mermaid, but nobody else is aware that that's even a thing. So they think he's a musical genius. Yep. So he's like crazy <laughs> famous. <laughs> But Kitty Pride shows up and she has a meeting with Gambit. Yes. And she's looking for she wants to analyze this anomaly that this that her machine cannot recognize. Yeah. And so Star Lord sees her, and of course, prior to Secret Wars, they were engaged, and he's like, Kitty! <laughs> and he runs out to 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 talk to her to you like know, reunite. To reunite because apparently he doesn't actually realize that there are multiple versions of these people. Well, he, he does I, yeah, because well, of, he doesn't. I don't know if he knows that there's multiple versions. I think he does, but he is aware that his kitty died, that his fiance Kitty Pride died. Mm -hmm. He's also aware that the Drax at in Manhattan is not the Drax he knows. So, yeah. so he's kind of aware that there's different versions. But he also seemed kind of surprised when Kitty wasn't totally down with yeah. him, like kissing her. So it, it's almost like maybe he thinks that. There's different versions of them in all the worlds, but they're always together. Yeah. Maybe he or I don't know. Maybe he just got so excited to he see his dead fiance. Lost, he lost himself forgot. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But he, uh, you know, interrupts this meeting she's having with Gambit, and he ends up taking a punch to the face because he just kissed this woman who has no idea who the <laughs> hell he is, and so she socks him one, yes. and his blood drops on her reader. And he registers the same as the anomaly. Yes. And she's like, you're coming with me to the lab. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be really interesting because it seems like Kitty Pride is basically um, working for a science foundation that goes out and finds these anomalies. And they prove with science that they were part of Doom's original plan. Yeah. Uh, thus getting rid of any heresy. Um, and... So, yeah, he, he's going to get some testing done. Yeah. But he's with his his lady, his yes. fiance. So. And I bet things go, you know, things work out for yeah. him. This was a really fun comic. Yeah. yeah. And Harley Quinn, Power Girl, number two. And this is a super fun comic. Yes. We reviewed, I think we reviewed the first one, didn't we? I believe we did. I'm pretty sure we did. And this, you know, picks up, and I gotta tell you, I generally don't really care for Harley Quinn, except for in the Batman cartoon. I liked her in that. But I love her in Harley Quinn Power Girl. And I'm the same. I'm not a big Harley Quinn fan. I, For the most part, I just think that she's obnoxious and annoying. But I love her in this. Absolutely love her in this. It's fantastic. <laughs> the art is really fun. The story is a blast, particularly Harley's part. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because, I mean, Power Girl, through, through most of the comics, she's just... She's it, Power Girl. She, she's Power Girl. She's, yeah. she's, she's beating stuff up. She's, she's throwing people around. She's fighting. Harley Quinn gets all of the fun in yeah, the Yeah, and she, like, stumbles into success. Like, yeah. she just, oh, I need something, and I, uh, oh, here we go. Let's use this. And yeah. it, it always just seems to work out. Like, she never has any forethought. It's just, 
on yeah. the go as she sees stuff let's use that and it works <laughs> yeah, she falls ass backwards yes. into success which is really kind of fun and just awesome yeah 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 and probably my favorite part in this is there's another star trek reference in it yes <laughs> there's a red shirt reference in yep. it and there was a red shirt reference in archie versus sharknado yes and just i got two red shirt references in one evening and it was in, awesome in one week of comics <laughs> and they're, they're, they both came out today so yep. if, if you haven't checked out harley quinn power girl yet you really need to check it out especially yes. if you like fun comics yeah. one thing I, i've noticed about me particularly you know i I do like my my serious comics, you know, Walking Dead, Outcast. I actually enjoyed Wolf and Starve is really good. If you haven't mm -hmm. checked out Starve yet, Starve is really I good. like the serious comics, but I noticed my taste is changing a little bit. The fun comics I'm actually enjoying. Like we read Batgirl a couple of weeks ago, and that was really fun mm -hmm. comic, and I enjoyed that. And I'm liking how Harley Quinn Power Girl. And just the more lighthearted comics. Oh, and Groot. Uh, Groot's oh, Groot. amazing. Oh, ah, yes. <laughs> so um, my taste in comics is actually, you know, like I'm getting younger in my taste <laughs> for comics. <laughs> <laughs> the older we get, the younger we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the more happy-go-lucky comics now than I did, you know, two or three years ago. I wasn't reading comics two or three years ago, so <laughs> all right, you got me get to it. I think that's all our comics to review, right? Yep, okay. that's it. We bought way more than this. Oh, um, gosh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we may do another uh, comic review or two this week, depending on what kind of time we we, uh, we have. We are going to Fanboy Expo this weekend. Yes. So if we don't get time to do another comic review, we apologize, but we'll get some uh, convention video for you. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, we are doing the subscriber giveaway now, so... When we hit 250 subscribers, we will announce the winner of the giveaway. And to become eligible to win the prizes, all you have to do is be a subscriber and share one of our videos. And the prizes are, you will get to choose one of these three. The Wizard World Chicago Walking Dead number one variant in color. Or the black and white version of that comic. Or the Wizard World uh, Nashville co uh, Walking Dead number one comic in color. And <laughs> also, you will get a signed picture of Boba Fett himself, Jeremy Bullock, which we are going to pick up at Fanboy Expo Tampa this weekend. So we'll be able to actually show you that beginning next week. Okay, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and share any one of our videos. This one, one of our other ones, doesn't matter. Just share one, and then you are eligible for the prize. And if you are reading any of the comics that we are reading, we'd love to talk about it. So comment down below. And also, don't forget to like this video. We really appreciate seeing that number go up. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.